All right, let's get into the meat of what this guy can maybe do for us. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time since you're already <laughs> sat on that chair. Uh, oh, that's that's good, actually. Um, we were looking for some ways to, like, boost our conversational skills with him, and the chair was hurting us, so who knows? Let's see, where do we want to start? Let's just, let's go all in. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm told the union is involved in the, the local drug trade. <laughs> what? Harry, how can you say that to me? You know, I appreciate a joke as much as any jolly fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? Well, the reaction appears to be sincere, but it's impossible to tell this guy, honestly. <laughs> Thanks, drama. Uh, no, I, I am investigating, yes. Man rubs his temple and closes his eyes in pain. You've hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. But you know what? He perks up. I trust you like I trust all my friends. And I know you'll never talk to me about this again because you don't want to wound me. So do what you want and let's change the subject. All right. He's hiding his real reaction beneath courtesy. Uh, thank you for understanding. Lieutenant looks him in the eye. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. Yeah, so this guy knows everything. Uh, I guess probably everything that goes on in this whole area. He knows who we are. Harry Dubois, it seems to be. Seems to line up with other things we've seen. A nun taken, the man quickly replies and then turns to you. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? Uh, aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Honestly, I don't want to bring it up, Harry. I heard you have people measureheads uh, become measureheads race pupil. Well, it, it was a it was a tactic. I needed to get in somehow. It's not like I'm a racist now. <laughs> of course, Harry. Of course, you're not some kind of fantastic racist now. And rest assured, no one's going to hear about it. Winks at you. No one's going to hear what you did with race there, Harry. Your race bonanza is safe with me. Word of how racy it got will never leave Martinez. Great. Anyway, I assure you I'm a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Well, speaking of that, uh, you called me Mr. Dubois. Why? Well, of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard. I call you Harry. So that's really my name? My God, it's so true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesia cop, aren't you? He shrugs with an amazed expression. What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that, he looks at you, are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is at first. Yeah, no, I, I, I know that. My memory's fine. I'm just testing you. <laughs> so good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. He pats the brown folder in front of him. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. I guess word has already reached him, no matter, no harm done. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? The lieutenant inspects Everard over his spectacles. Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? His eyes never leave yours. Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. He just totally dismisses him. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on edge. Do some probing first. All right. We have a really good chance. Um, plus one from reading shipping folders before. Hmm. So let's get this straight. My, my full name then. You know it. It's Harry. He glances at the folder. Harry Dubois. Okay, well, uh, how, I got like it. I, I, I can work with that. And I can work with you, Harry. Now, what else can I do for you? Uh, do you know anything about my family? Like, do I have wife or kids? Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here, unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? I, I, I kind of do. I think I'd be a wonderful father. <laughs> well, yes. He looks around, uninterested. I'm sure you're going to make one little boy or girl very happy and proud one day. And uh, what kind of cop does it say I am? Well, Harry, he turns a couple of pages. If I were to sum you up in one word, it would be apologetic. We got told we were like sorry cop before. 
<laughs> what? I'm not apologetic. I'm confident. Well, you are sure come off as very confident in all our interactions, Harry. You're a real man's man. Where'd you get that folder anyway? Oh, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. This translates to, ah, you guys are so corrupt. Um, I find that very suspicious. May, may I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for unionize only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you'll understand. Please continue, Harry. Let's get a look at that folder. Very high. The only way we fail this is double ones. Nice. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand and pets it. He's hiding it from you because it's not a real RCM folder. It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. Uh, Everard, that is not an RCM folder, I would know. Okay, Harry, you got me, he says, grinning. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. Uh, he got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi, from the Census Bureau, like I said. He looks annoyed. Now, I'm actually a very busy man, so is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. Good. A pity the mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. So, uh, the Census Bureau says my name is Harry Dubois. <laughs> yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? All right, listen, uh, could you help me get a dead body down from that tree? You might. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> you uh, might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my, don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Breakthrough eminent, nice. Uh, Mr. Claire, uh, the man was hanged with a cargo belt, a steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us a sustain on the neighborhood. Hmm. Yeah, and also, uh, to add to that, I studied the work boots at the crime scene. Uh, worker boots. Or footprints, sorry. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He licks his fat lips and smiles. <laughs> but of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. He picks up the handset of a radio phone to his right and clicks a button. <laughs> Jean-Luc, my boy. Oh. Is this the... Jean-Luc is the, uh, the racist, the, the racial dude that we had to get the knowledge for. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. And Jean, please take it easy with that race science. He's had enough of that. He hangs up and turns back to you. You can find Jean-Luc down at the gates, but you already knew that. Anyway, he's going to help you. All right, cool. Well, uh, do you know anything about my lost gun? <laughs> yes, your lost gun. Uh, my best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Well, why, why would... What? But the, the gun may have been bought from Roy's pawn shop. Have your men factored that in? Yes, thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun, Harry. My men have indeed factored that in that you pawned it. Now, please, let the professionals do their job. Kick back, Harry. Relax. I have great guys on this. You focus on what's important, building your relationship for the, our relationship for the good of Martin Mays. It does not come as a surprise to him. He actually might actually not be bullshitting. Hmm. Does this mean that if I do things for you that I'll get my gun back? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Track your gun down. Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. Uh, of course. Uh, I understand. We help you. You help us. All right. Uh, I, I kind of want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here. I, I would love to help you like I'm helping you with the body and your lost gun. Secret task complete. Interview union boss. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. Yeah, I sense there's a butt coming. 
But <laughs> there's the thing why I've been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, uh, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. Suddenly, he slaps himself on the forehead. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. Doors? Uh, okay. Kim, uh, is that true what he says? Are we door-opening machines? I'm not sure I understand. Uh, if you're asking us to break down someone's door, I'm not... That's not going to happen. Oh, come on now. I just need to open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing shady about it. Uh, whose door is it? Oh, no one. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. Uh, what do you mean, a weasel? A loud, blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. He removes his glasses and rubs his nose. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Why aren't you opening it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. Slams his fist together. You feel... You look like you could run around all day. And you want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. Exactly. I repeat, I'm very, very busy, Mr. Kitharagi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. He turns to you. So what will it be, Harry? Listen, I don't know. I'm starting to get the impression you don't know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend, he sinks deeper into his chair. I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. All right, damn it. Fine. I'll look into it, but we... I'll look into it. We need to talk about that murder. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. He flicks his fingers. Open apartment door. You can get the keys from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the union, special operations, hardened socialist, a real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. He smiles, obviously satisfied with how well he planned it all out. Oh, one last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Hmm. We could probably mess that up a little bit. I'm sure. Uh, I also met this Joyce, the uh, company representative. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. He adjusts a button on his sleeve. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation here. Everyone's just pals here. <laughs> just pals. And we're all trying to do what's best for Martinez here. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you get that nasty body down from the tree and finding your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. I see I see your angle here, bud. Whew, that's suspiciously nice of him. Suspiciously nice. Yeah. Uh, huh. Hey, uh, what happened to the previous negotiator before Joyce, uh, Mr. Gomo? And what do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. Well, oh, he made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. Hmm. I heard you called him a midget. <laughs> Harry, I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, uh, Joyce did say that the previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished, Harry. The woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. The man frowns disapprovingly. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Wait, there was no mention of casserole from Joyce. Yeah, funny. Uh, Joyce didn't mention any casserole. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew or a hair dryer and iron. The point is her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. Particular brand of humor he has, it makes for a fine distraction. If it 
spilled blood you're looking for, then there certainly isn't any in his expression or demeanor now. Hmm. Well, why haven't you let Joyce in to see you then? If she actually wants to see me, she'll find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a band negotiator. He doesn't want to see her. It's simple as that. Pretty obvious. Well, she seems to think that the union is lowballing her. <laughs> yes, yes, lowballing, of course. He's suddenly very serious. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear this is childish and irresponsible behavior. All right, let, let's talk about something else then. Of course, Harry, let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. It's at least what he wants us to feel. I have no interest in what she's doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember none of this. He makes an all-encompassing gesture. Is a secret. Tell her all about it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. He looks around. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'll help you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everard doesn't mind. Now, hold on a second. Uh, the brother, the brother has a lazy eye, right? And this dude, I'm just now noticing, this might be the brother. And then he says Everard doesn't mind. I don't, maybe that's a slip up of some kind. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, that, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. Yeah, maybe this is his brother. Uh, what's in that container outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. We're talking about the one we lowered, maybe? Yeah, there's something special about it. It was attached to the Cavilson crane. Oh, Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way you should go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. <laughs> we did talk to the container. All right. Wait! He leans, reaching into his drawer, and pulls out a plastic card. You need to get in and out through the gate. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. I was wondering how I was supposed to get out. We had that card previously, so we already have a way. Here, you're one of us now. Real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. All right. Indirect modes of taxation has been completed. Oh, that's sick. Okay. Ultra liberal dialogue options give plus one real. Uh, minus one empathy. Thinks he's a hustler or something. Turns out those financial oversight committee gangsters stuffed millions of hard-earned dividends away in the last place anyone thought to look. The hearts and minds of everyday Revisholians. You need to spread that deregulation gospel to the people. Tell them about the foreign fair tax. Preach that 98% gross burden. Preach it, preacher man. Set the brothers free. Taxes are racist. So an interesting one. What I really like about some of these is how random some of the outcomes are. Like, um, some kind of superstar is an example. Uh, that's not a good example. Here, plus three shivers. Obviously, just a really nice benefit to the bow collector. Advanced race theory. We did it because we had to talk to the guy, but now we get plus one in conceptualization. White morning. The zoom out thing is nice, but we might end up ditching that. Um, this one... Speed gives one side. We haven't seen speed yet. So maybe that's a good one to keep. These ones have been okay. Some fails and we heal up. And I've been actually just healing when we have like a space left. Maybe that's a little overkill. But there's some of these that I would be confident in uh, ditching. Like we would probably get rid of this. Because it's just a minus one to logic. Which we are uh, pretty solid in. Visual Calculus is already at 7. Um, so if we wanted to go much above that, that's the only thing that would be prohibiting us. So Anyway. Open the apartment door for Everett. Get the key to the weasel's door for manana. Do what you have to do. Everett has promised to give you the information on the case in return. He asks you to open the basement door behind the greenhouse in the backyard. Okay. Okay. Manana. Let's go, buddy. I still think that's probably the brother that we talked to. If I'm not mistaken, the brother had the lazy eye. Ah, 
Uh, we could try this, see if anything else has opened up here. We have rhetoric. Jeez. Impossible. Might as well. Double six, maybe? Are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? Because getting physical wasn't an option. Uh, because what wasn't an option? Lieutenant looks startled. Uh, using my body over my wits. Uh, now is not the time to get to philosophical detective. You can do that after hours. Okay. Well, it was worth a shot. Uh, Manana is going to be out here. We'll get that key and we'll go straight to that. We're also going to talk to uh, Reese's dude. Measure head. Oh, we did actually theorize earlier, too, that he would be the one to help us take it down. So that's working out pretty nice. Uh, let's start with him, I guess, since we're up here. Listen up, big boy. The unpromising raised pupil return. <laughs> uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, Everard told you to help us get the body down from the tree. <laughs> so it was my promising wraith people into the harbor and used my superior to give me orders. I salute your cunning and will remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. It's so noble, Measure Head. There's a but. But, while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. He turns to your lieutenant. Both of you. Wow. Uh, what if we don't want to do that? Now, this is the uncomfortable result of not taking it down ourselves. I, I can live with the compromise. Uh, listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my Herora Capital Group. Okay, then. Uh, we'll wait here. Babe, see that they stay here the whole time. Cool. I'm fine with it. Oh, we gotta ditch our little clipboard. Makes us look dorky. <laughs> The woman's gaze follows Measurehead as he leaves. She turns to you. So, uh, you guys are like cops or something? Yeah, why are you with Measurehead? <laughs> Look at him. He's a craniomatic perfection. Are you cops or what? Oh, apparently. Cool. I like men with guns and power. I'm Katya, by the way. You hear that? Lieutenant looks towards the yard. That sound. He's breaking something. I think he's breaking the branch, likely. Yeah, Jean-Luc must be really tearing it up over there. Wish I could see it. Oh, I wish I could see it, too. Look at you, RCM rent -a cops guarding that bridge like Everett's lapdogs. Is this where it's at now? The RCM is for sale? Oh, boy. And who are you? The lieutenant fires back. What is your business here? Why are your clothes four sizes too small for you? <laughs> Listen, uh, it's none of your business. A shrill laughter interrupts you, echoing across Martinez. It's Kuno, then. Man turns to look behind him at the behemoth appearing around the corner, approaching him, walking past him. What the hell is happening? He's back. Surprising to stand upright with this body mass he's got going on here. Woo! And the corpse has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with race victory today. Ah. There have been no side choosing. We did what we had to do to keep order. And what you had to do was to become a union man for all to see. Interesting. Well, uh, I got a question for you. Isn't Evrot the union boss? What? Uh, don't be so vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. Yeah, but you do still serve him. Like, how does that factor into your life? Uh, Mr. Claire is a man of vision on means. He has the will to confront international capitals something. Your race nevistic communist never did. Also, to serve as noble, it takes discipline. Uh, your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. Well, uh, my, my jam is a mysterious fourth thing, actually. Ah, uh, jam. 
individualism. You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? You have picked them up from rock and roll songs. <laughs> Actually, I have gotten it from disco. Offshoots of the Seminis people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race, but what is done is done. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side projects of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminis race. Yeah, I, I don't really know who the Seminis are like, exactly. Like, I've recently experienced head trauma, so... I can see that. The, the Simonese are the South Island race, a haplogroup A4A, the rightful masters of the Insulinian archipelago. We descend from the Arophagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. We are the future, that is all you need to know. So you were like born and raised on the islands before you moved to Revishal? I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulan Bure are my. In, with me in my genetic dreams, I see young Seminese women walk into the Grey Mass on Ile de Fantôme, waiting on immaculate conception from the pale. Uh, yeah, okay, well, thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, Kim, what do you think about this? I think this racist is better than the last, but the next racist will be the really good one. That will be the... That will be our lucky racist. <laughs> he will grant us three wishes, huh? Your uh, pedomorphic friend has quick wits, a uh, protruding occiput and an indented zygomatic bone. Lieutenant does not flinch. You should keep him close. The congenital defect of farsightedness does not render him a complete invalid. He still has the use of his mind. Hey, uh, why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not the first line of defense. I'm the last. In addition, the, the so-called Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degrading. You pick on something artificial in his tone. Like he's putting on an act. This is unlike him. He is usually more himself. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, there's definitely more to it. What have you got against them? Uh, fine, they have recently fallen under the influence of a possibly sexually perverted female vagrant and a narcotics peddler. It is shameful. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, who, do you, uh, who do you mean exactly? Find out for yourself, endomorphic blob. Interesting. Lieutenant takes a note. So he's referring to the woman that was, uh, that the mercenary guy who's dead, uh, was like a quote unquote assaulting or hitting on or whatever the case was. Uh, I, I think we're good. Thanks. Let's get the frick out of here. Okay. Get the body down. Go to the yard and see what he accomplished. <sighs> Probably a disaster. Talk to Maniana for that key. So, how'd you like our harbor? You've been in there, he means. Probably talk to the boss too, probably. Uh, yeah, labor utopia. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. All right, you talk to the boss. I too, I like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. Yeah, Everard said, uh, you have a key to uh, a door. A key, huh? He runs his fingers through his mustache. Oh, what door is this key supposed to open? Uh, he said it belonged to a weasel. Oh, say no more. I, I got you. He taps the side of his nose with a little wink. Basement apartment. I got that key right here, and let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah, well, that's sure, but I'm not really doing this for political reasons, manana. Oh, so you're the none of the above type, are you? I get it, I get it. I, I like, like to keep my distance, too. But it doesn't matter. It's a good thing that you're doing. Thanks. What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling and rags. That's all I know. Organization is what's called compartmentalized. Means we keep out of each other's business. Okay, but where did you get the key from? Uh, the janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. His gaze wanders into the distance. None of this mess that we're in, this jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess? Hmm. Is there anything I should know about this task? Like this weasel person, when I'll be home? Shakes his head. I'm more of a philosophical dock worker. I like 
to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we fight for. Takes a big sip from his flask. He means he's not going to tell you because he doesn't know. But he will shoot mouth with you now that you're working for Everard. Who he is and what they're fighting for. This is interesting. Well, actually then, do you know anything about the Hardy Boys? Las Ardis? They're an independent militant group. Uh, a bit too high strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you, preserve the rule of law and all that, except it's Everard's law. But really, they're just like you. Hmm. And you got any idea who killed the hangman? Uh, the mercenary, I. Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Uh, why even do such a thing? Well, the merc was hanged with a very specific type of cargo belt. In your opinion, are the dock workers involved in the killing? Oh, what a thought. Why would noble workers resort to such a thing unless they were pushed, of course? Uh, pushed how? If your dead guy was an enemy combatant. Well, w what does that mean? He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. Well, did you kill him? Uh, I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men with all sorts of skills. He's not lying about doing it himself. So he might have been in on it. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. Uh, no problem. I, I, I wish you the best in your search, but I'm glad it's not my search. All right. See you later. Empathy is kicking in. What's this? We're getting reports of normal, reasonable, temperate political opinion somewhere in Martinez. Yeah, well, that's that's me, Mr. Reasonable. Uh, this is probably because uh, I keep saying that none of the above to political stuff, isn't it? It's also about that, but it's also more. Perhaps it's the hangover. Perhaps it's a temporary surge of serotonin. But something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the kingdom of conscience. Uh, first, where, what, where is this kingdom of conscience? Uh, it's not a place, it's a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only been achieved a handful of times. Uh, how do you bring about those circumstances? Incrementally. Oh, you'd get there faster with a little speed. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. And that's the genius of Dolores Day. She recognized that progress is meaningless if it gains or lost, but are lost because of instability. Real, real, lasting change can only come about gradually, increment by increment. But what about all the things that are wrong now? Uh, just, just, just because you live in the present doesn't mean you have the right to place your needs above the needs of the future. You may never live to see the kingdom of conscience. Your children may not. But even your grandchildren might not. But that's no excuse not to keep working. What rationality? What a fucking joke. Wait, so is the kingdom of conscience really about doing things or just preserving the status quo? Do you believe the status quo is preferable to chaos and bloodshed? Well, uh, generally, yeah. Oh, there you have it. Sometimes holding the line is progress. All right. Well, what's the kingdom of conscience actually like? The kingdom is difficult to comprehend and even more difficult to describe. Partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define it and limit it today. The kingdom of conscience is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial, post-ideological, and post-sexual. Oh, that sounds different. Uh, I still want to live in the present, though. I don't Do we want to go down this route? Huh. Post-industrial, post-sexual. Ah, we're out. That seems fine. I still want to live in the present, though. What you want is immaterial. The kingdom of conscience is coming, whether you like it or not. Only very slowly. All right, empathy. Thanks. Uh, okay. So, open the apartment door on it. Let's do another one of these. I'll do, uh, jamais vu. Revachal Special Administrative Region, La Caillou, the Insulindian Ocean, Coalition Government, Insulindian Mission Command, name after name, none of them is familiar. They seem real, but something is wrong. You feel like a kid looking at stickers in the fridge. Truvant, the Apricot Company, World Games 34. You can almost see your hand reaching out for them, scratch at the corners, see if they peel loose. This feels like the most important of all the thoughts, the one you truly must complete. Really? Derealization. This could be could be bizarre. I'm into it. Okay. 
Let's go check out the body. Never, ever. 